Hey guys, good morning. Happy Thursday. It's Daryl here. It's 9 a.m. here in Connecticut on the East Coast. Just got back in from four hours of shoveling outside. 18 inches of snow here in Connecticut on the East Coast today. Um, all right, I promised you guys a video about Pete Buttigieg being the first openly gay uh, person to rise to the little, openly gay person that's a presidential cabinet member, secretary level uh, in the United States. And I think that's fantastic. I'm just going to tell you guys, I, I, I hate having to say this from a straight guy's point of view, all right? Um, not that it's important, but I, I don't know. I feel like from my point of view, I just want to tell you guys what I think. Um, over the last, okay, over the last four years, something that drove me crazy was the lack of diversity in the Trump administration, for one. When we looked at pictures of, uh, you know, the Trump cabinet or Trump with all his, his people behind him, it was just, it was, it was scary. It was like a bunch of clones. Um, same suits, same ties, same haircuts, same age, same everything, same color skin, same religion, just, just clones from one end to the other. Um, wealthy, extremely wealthy Older, somewhat out of shape, white guys, uh, Christian, uh, Presbyterian, whatever. Um, they, they were they were all just duplicates, and had that. I don't know if it's because uh, just my personality that I'm an artist. I strongly believe in diversity. That's why I, I strongly support immigrant Im immigration here. Um, I remember hearing when I was young that one of the best dog breeds you could have wasn't actually a breed, but it was actually what you would call a mutt. One of the best, strongest, most loyal animals, dogs you'd ever have was a mutt, a crossbreed. And, you know, and that stuck in my head. Um, I, I just love ever since I was young. I remember uh, wanting to taste Chinese food. I remember being curious about Egypt, um, interested in radio control, uh, different art, different music. Uh, diversity has always just played a huge part in my life. I, I, I love diversity. So when we had this Trump administration, that, to, from my point of view, was just uh, conform. You, it was very conformist. You had to conf, you know, fit in. I remember just when I was at that Trump rally two or three weeks ago, when I took a knee there, and this entire field of people just... It, it reminded me of like one of those science fiction movies, like uh, Revenge, uh, no, uh, the Body Snatchers, when they'd open their mouth and scream, and they go, ah, ah. You know, when the, 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 the people that were already snatched would spot a normal person? That's what I felt like. Uh, when I took a knee that day, they just all pointed at me and started screaming, Nonconformist! He's taking a knee! That's how I felt that day. And yet, I, I felt so good doing it too. Just ruffling their, you know, stirring their pot. Rocking their boat a little bit. I freaking love it. Um... I've just always loved diversity. I think diversity makes the country stronger. Different ideas, more ideas, different directions. Um, I, I just, I, I love it. Like I said, um, one thing that bothered me too. Now, I don't know what the, there's this group. The group that President Trump told to stand back and stand by, okay? I can't say the name really here. All right, that group of, of guys, I, I've never, I have, I have no, to me, it seems like a, a bunch of insecure men that are very, are lacking self-confidence. They seem like they need to be congratulated for who they are. Look at me, look at what I am. Yay, pat on the back, pat me on the back. That's what it seems like to me. Um, I don't know if it's uh, because they see BLM getting attention, and that's a whole different, not to get too far off track here, but that's a whole different situation where we're talking about the use of excessive force. It's not just because of somebody's nationality. I don't want to get off on a sidetrack here. But these boys that were told to stand back and stand by, you see the way they, they seem to go out of their way to be overly macho with the, the big trucks, 
um, around, around town here, when I'm out walking or on my bike, I, I, I hear these big four-wheel drives, you know, and I hear them come up behind me. They go by me when I'm like on my, on my mountain bike, and, the, and half the time these guys will hit the gas hard with the diesel, so it'll blow a diesel cloud in my face like when they drive by. Hey, maybe it's just coincidence, I don't know, but it, it happens quite often. Um, I just, I, I, I do not, I am not one of these, these guys. When I look at these, these, this group of men, I, I, to me, they seem very insecure, you know, with the guns. The guns to me have always, you know, it, me and my father went hunting. He taught me how to handle a gun. It was a tool. A lot of times, like with the Michigan State House, you, you see them standing on the steps. And to me, the way they were using this tool and the way, the way they would show off with it, it, it became a phallic symbol to me. A total misuse of that tool. It seemed like they were trying to increase their masculinity. You see what I'm saying with that? And, it's, you know, this is just from my heart. Totally from my heart here. What I believe, I believe that I, I could dance around this room in a pink tutu and have lipstick on and eyeshadow and I could dance around here and it wouldn't change who I am. It wouldn't make me any less masculine. Um, I've had a good life. You know, I, I've, I've, I think I was lucky growing up uh, being the man in the house after my, I lost my father and I grew up with my mother and my sister and I got very comfortable in talking and, and just being a friend to women and understanding women. And I've always, I've always had good relationships. I've been very lucky throughout my life. And now at my age of, of 54, uh, I, I just, I can't even imagine being insecure, you know, and having to worry about being, try, that I have to act, act more masculine, you know, or something like that. It doesn't even cross my mind. And I have to wonder about the people. You know, because to me, it's a non-issue. I am a man. Of course I'm a man. I, I've, I've had 54 years of manhood on this earth, you know, and I, there's no need for me to, you know, like I said, nothing I wear, I could, I could wear anything or do anything, and it's not going to change, you know. It's not going to change my 54 years of manhood. I'm proud of who I've been, and that's all I need to say about that. Um, now there was some photos, like there was some videotape of Pete Buttigieg kissing his husband. Now, this is why I'm stating, this is why I stated that I'm a straight guy. I'm, you know, I got, I'm, I got to talk to you guys straight from the heart. When I see that, um, I got to be honest. Um, it doesn't make me uncomfortable, maybe uncomfortable. I'm not sure how it makes me feel. It just... I don't know how to say it. Um, I, it. It doesn't make me cringe or anything. It's just, it's hard for me to relate to it. it. It is. And that's just, it's being honest. It's just being totally honest. You know, I, I, I'm glad because this person has found somebody he loves. He's expressing love for another human being. And that's a beautiful thing. You know, when you care and support somebody and you're there for them and you love somebody, that, that's a beautiful thing. And that I support. Um, kissing another man, you know, of course, when I see this happening, it goes through my head, you know, just I'll be totally honest here. You know, well, could I ever do that? How could I ever do that? And I can't, I can't, I guess the easiest way to say this is I can't relate to it. I can't. But I respect it. I, I completely respect it. And more than that, I have a I I I'm amazed. I'm very I'm very respectful and proud of, of them doing that, of having the courage. Let me say this. I I, I have a an uncle, my father's brother, that came out as gay after being married and having kids, and then he 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 admitted he was gay. He was in the army in Vietnam, a very a man's man. And now he's married to another man. And I've had nothing but sheer, just amazing admiration for this. To be able to come out and just say, this is who I am. To, for, for, for Pete Buttigieg to kiss another man. 
on video, you know, just out in front of everybody and just say, look, this is who I am. Um, I have nothing but admiration for that because that must take an incredible, incredible amount uh, of confidence and self-control and knowing yourself and saying, this is who I am and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be who I am regardless of what people think. And I, I'm amazed by that. Uh, you know, I, I have nothing but admiration. Um, there's a lot of people that it makes uncomfortable. And to those people, I, I say this, look at all the stuff we have on TV, um, with movies, the, the shooting, uh, the stuff we see in horror movies, the, I, I gotta be careful how I word this, the violence. Look at that. We're fine with that. If pe- if one person, if that was uh, somebody, if that was a movie where somebody was doing something god awful to another guy with a, a pencil, like John Wick, you know, we'd be okay with that. That's amazing. But you see one guy expressing love for another guy, just love, and it's terrible. Oh my God, it's going to ruin the world. It's going to take down the United States of America. It's going, it's going to, to tear apart our foundations. It's going to rule. It's going to ruin families. Oh my God. It's come on. It's one, it, even though we don't understand it, maybe we can't relate to it. That's okay. It's one person expressing their love for another person, and that can't be bad. And for the people that say, well, I'm just sticking up for what God wants. Well, I, I've, I've always been weary of people that say they know what God wants, you know, or weary of, of people that say they talk to God and God tells them, that, you know, what, they, what God wants and what God doesn't want. I think that's kind of up to God. And I got to ask you this. I can't believe that God or Jesus would be okay with somebody getting a pencil or a chainsaw. Like I said, I have to be careful how I phrase this. Or, or getting run over by a car or pushed out of a window. He'd be okay with that. But two guys kissing each other? Oh, no. Oh, no, we can't have that. Come on. You know, uh, and then as to what now, see a lot of a lot of people that are uptight about this take it to another level, like what these what these two people do in the privacy of their own home. And let's just be honest, that is nobody's damn business. It's not. You know, uh, I think a lot of these people just get too vivid in their imaginations and start thinking, well, they do all sorts of stuff, you know, in the privacy of you know, and they do terrible things, and that's just none of your business. And anything that's out of love for another human being can't be bad. That's my opinion, you know. Um, the God I know is a God of love, peace, you know, compassion. And that's all I see when I see one man kissing another is love, compassion, caring about somebody else. Even though I can't relate to it, I know it's not a bad thing. And I'm glad that we're moving past this, that hopefully we can move past this and concentrate on more important things in this world than than who somebody, you know, than really, really, isn't there more important things we need to be concerned about right now than who's doing what in their bedroom with who right now? Think about it. Congratulations to Pete Buttigieg and congratulations to me because I can say his name now. All right, you guys have a good Thursday.